I'm Tom Keep from Melbourne University, a PhD candidate there, and I'll be speaking today on the Hellenic Museum Digitization Project and Theoretical Considerations of Photogrammetric Representation. So thank you for that. That was very kind of them. Um, to produce a kind of online library of digital models produced using photogrammetry. Um, I've presented previously on the nature of this project, which uh, some of you perhaps may have seen at M4A15. So I'm going to, go and give an outline of the project here and focus more on theoretical considerations of photogrammetry. If for some reason you would like to know more about the project, I've uploaded the recording of that earlier presentation to YouTube with the permission of M4A. And you can find it by searching my name in YouTube if you would like to watch it for reasons best known to yourself. Um, and I will throw the link in the chat later. And finally, if you find my presentation to be dull, don't worry, I don't blame you. But I would recommend checking out the Sketchpad page where I've been uploading these models for the Hellenic Museum. Um, you can check them out and maybe let me know your thoughts after the presentation, just using that URL at the bottom of the screen, or if you go to Sketchfab and just search Hellenic Museum under users. So yes, in brief, the work of the Hellenic Museum Digitization Project was to create a library of what I like to call digital surrogates um, of the, heritage of the um, museum's material collection. The collection contains heritage material relating to the contemporary understanding of Hellenismus or Greek cultural identity. The project follows on from similar work undertaken by cultural institutions across the globe, most notably the British Museum, which currently has almost 300 models available on their Sketchpad page. Within Australasia, similar work has been undertaken by the Chow Chak Wing Museum of the University of Sydney and the Auckland Museum, although the Auckland Museum's output is much more focused on natural history. More and more major and minor institutions have been making photogrammetry and online accessibility a priority, and the need for such access has been made, I would say, abundantly clear with the restrictions recently imposed by the COVID pandemic. The project has been well received by museum visitors and further work is planned to more thoroughly integrate the models into the museum displays using QR codes, virtual galleries, 3D printing and potential augmented reality displays. The two models shown here were selected by Sketchfab's Cultural Heritage and History team for inclusion in the weekly Cultural Heritage and History Top 10 collections. And an additional model was selected by Agisoft for inclusion in their collection of exemplary objects. An article on the potential for photogrammetry for conservators has been accepted for publication in Scroll, which is the publication of the Grimwade Centre for Cultural Materials Conservation at the University of Melbourne. And additional articles and conference presentations are being planned. So I'd just like to quickly overview the workflow here um, that I used to create these models because I think it is relevant to our theoretical understandings of what these representations are and their relationship to the originals and to truth. So I work on the assumption that most of you are at least familiar with photogrammetry and just quickly outline my process here. So photographs were taken using a Nikon D5300 on manual settings with a fixed 50 millimeter lens to maintain consistency between photos. The objects were placed within a light box and rotation was automated using a Foldio 360 turntable with an X-Ride color checker card photographed alongside the objects to control for the impact of light. The photographs were adjusted in Adobe Lightroom using X-Ride software to control the colors and small adjustments were made to exposure, clarity and texture settings. Masks for the images were generated using Microsoft Paint 3D to reduce processing time and background noise in the models. Modeling was undertaken within Agisoft Metashape with a standard workflow. Even when necessary, adjustments to the mesh would be made manually within Blender modeling software after remeshing and insert meshes to make the file more manageable. The model would be imported back into Metashape for re-texturing the adjusted geometry. And this process could be repeated as necessary until the final model was satisfactory to my eyes. Finally, the model would be uploaded to Sketchfab for sharing. Okay, so I decided to outline the process used to create these models, not to serve as a how-to guide, but because I believe that an understanding of this process is important for conceptualizing the nature of the relationship between 3D models and original artifacts. Reading these models as simple one-to-one -one representations of the originals would be to overlook the impact that editing, manipulation, and decision-making along the process has upon the final representation. They are ultimately imperfect visual articulations of data recorded from the original. And the question of what is represented, what the meaning and value of these representations are, and which qualities of the original are reproduced or adequately captured merits consideration particularly now as their use is becoming increasingly common within archaeology and heritage. 
So two theorists I would like to consider to work through these matters are the critical theorist Walter Benjamin and the postmodernist Jean Baudrillard. The selection of these two figures is not related to any consistency between their perspectives. Both are loosely connected to the Frankfurt School and were influenced by Marxist theoretical perspectives, but did not really discuss the same content or offer particularly similar perspectives in their writings. Why I feel they are both relevant to a theoretical consideration of photogrammetry is that both were writing in what they considered to be periods of seismic paradigmatic shifts in society's relationship to art and culture spurred and facilitated by technological advancements and sociological correlates which merited their attention and what they had to wonder about what art meant now and whether it was the same as it had been before. Okay, so let's start with Walter Benjamin. Uh, Benjamin was a German Jewish philosopher writing in a period where technological advancement was massively impacting the nature of existence within Germany. The impact of World War I in the use of chemical warfare, widespread bombing and the machine gun appears to have left a deep mark on his assessment of the capacity of technology for both production and destruction, and how the aesthetics of war were embroiled in the production and reproduction of art. He wrote, war is beautiful because thanks to gas masks, terror inducing megaphones, flamethrowers and small tanks, man's domination over the subject machine is proven, end quote. Benjamin's interest in technological restructuring was linked to his perspectives on film as a developing medium, which he saw as restructuring the nature of art itself, as it too can be infinitely reproduced in thousands of effectively identical viewings, a fundamental departure from the unique experience of a theatrical production. So Benjamin conceptualized reproductions as having an incomplete relationship to an original, and that they fail to capture what he called the aura of the original. There is a uniqueness to an original in that it exists in only one place and one time, and this uniqueness is in a way an essential quality that influences our understanding of the piece. Benjamin notes that even the most perfect re reproduction can by definition never incorporate this quality into itself. The here and now of an original is part of an abstract conception of genuineness or authenticity. He discusses the role art played within religion, and how the sense of uniqueness and exceptionality served to fascinate and bedazzle audiences into a religious experience. And reproducing such a work, not only is this aura and authenticity absent from the reproduction, but in some way the original is changed as well, with every reproduction siphoning some of this aura away from the original and diminishing its potency. Importantly, Benjamin did not consider this to be necessarily a negative process. It is often read that way, but I don't think that's how he felt. Although reproduction diminishes the capacity of the original to perform its function, the intended social function is not necessarily a good one. Here, Benjamin's Marxist influence can be felt uh, in that religious power is not conceptualized as something which necessarily ought to be preserved. To quote Benjamin, as soon as the social function of authenticity ceases to be applied to artistic production, the whole social function of art is revolutionized. Instead of being founded on ritual, it is based on a different practice, politics, end quote. Benjamin considered reproduction to be, in a sense, a liberation of art, the creation of a new, uh, sorry, the creation of a new original with new functions to be performed. John Berger in Ways of Seeing would put it this way, the meaning of a painting has become transmittable. It has become information of a sort, messages, pieces of information to be used. Where Benjamin was writing in a period of dramatic mechanical revolution, Jean Baudrillard was witness to the emergence of digital technology, which massively increased the scale of society's capacity for reproduction of works of art. In Benjamin's lifetime, film theatres allowed for a stage play to be witnessed in a filmed reproduction by thousands. In Baudrillard's life, television and the emerging internet meant that just about any media could be consumed on demand by millions. Baudrillard considered that the power of the reproduction in the form of simulation had come to subsume completely the esteem of the original and the real, and evaluated that contemporary society existed in a state of what he called hyper-reality, wherein derivative and perverted simulations constitute the social fabric of existence. Baudrillard in particular considered virtual reality as inevitably becoming more real than real, a mode of existence whereby models, images, and codes of hyper-reality control thought and behavior. Hyperreality has its own independent, more powerful value than reality. 
He had a weird obsession with using Disneyland and washing machines for some reason as examples of hyper reality. Disneyland as a perverted representation of cultural realities where you've got your kind of fantasy Germany and washing machines as once purely functional utilitarian objects which had come over to take a new value as a cultural signifier. Um, I've put the brand Smeg here because that's what I think of when I think of them. Really nice things but no longer super functional. So to, be, to Baudrillard, reproductions can be categorized into four tiers. Reflections of reality, masking and perverting reality, masking the absence of reality, and hyperreality, which bears no relation to reality whatsoever. In Simulacra and Simulation, Baudrillard used Borges' vignette of the Cartographers Guild to illustrate that the representation of reality had come to be perceived as more significant than reality itself. In Borges, the Guild produces a map so perfectly intricately representative of the territory it charts that it mimics the dimensions perfectly and covers completely the landscape. Baudrillard contended that in the postmodern condition of hyperreality, the map would be valued and preserved, but the territory would be left to disintegrate. So to illustrate the stages of representation used by Baudrillard, I like to use the example of the pumpkin spice latte from Starbucks, um, which I've stolen from criticaltheory.com. So Baudrillard and effects argue that we have forgotten the pumpkin along the process of creating the pumpkin spice latte, and we live in today in the age of this latte, the hyperreal representation of the, of the pumpkin, better than the original, but bearing no intrinsic relationship to it. So similar to the photograph, photogrammetry has at times been conceptualized as an accurate representation of an original, a high fidelity reproduction. The terms digital replica or digital reconstruction are often used to describe these models. And the question ought to be considered, what is the relationship between the models and the original? Similarly to Benjamin's regard for the aura of original as being religiously involved, I think that the aura of heritage materials is often linked to a particular social function. In the hands of private collections, they act as status signifiers. Even within public museum collections, comprehension of the material and expressions of appreciation can act as a form of cultural capital. The French sociologist Pierre Bourdieu noted how behaviour within a museum or gallery space connected highbrow cultural participation and cultural capital. As mechanical reproductions emancipated works of art from religious function, I believe that photogrammetry may have the potential to emancipate heritage objects from systems of cultural capital. In producing and distributing digital reproductions, Photogrammetry offers the potential for greater accessibility to heritage materials, otherwise restricted to cultural elites. Done correctly, the transfiguration of heritage works into information can facilitate comprehension. I believe that at best, photogrammetry models ought to serve not as replacements for originals, but stand-ins um, that accessibly convey the meaning of the original when it is not possible to experience the original. For this reason, I personally prefer to use the term digital surrogate rather than re replica or reproduction. So to take an example from one of my personal models, um, interactive in elements can be incorporated into these models that help to interpret the meaning in a manner which can be more engaging for general audiences than a museum placard, allowing, allowing audiences to better comprehend them. If photogrammetry is considered a form of reproduction, what kind of reproduction is it? Recalling the stages in my own workflow I outlined earlier, it would be naive to propose a one-to-one -one relationship between the original and the surrogate. The degree of editing and manipulation undertaken within the process and the uses to which the final model is put impact its nature and can have different effects. I would argue that of the four stages of representation outlined by Baudrillard, photogrammetry can fulfill any one of them depending on how it's used. At its simplest and when undertaken carefully, I would argue that the simple photogrammetric model is more of a reflection of reality than a photograph, um, which Baudrillard accepts as a reflection of basic reality. However, with modeling software, it is possible to go beyond this and create hypothetical reconstructions based off of this representation, as I've done here, um, digitally retexturing a helmet to remove the bronze patina. I very deliberately uploaded these two models together as a single file, as I think a case could be made that presenting the retextured helmet alone would constitute a perversion of reality. In some cases, the technology has been used to physically reconstruct replicas of lost originals, as in the case of the Palmyra arch destroyed by ISIS and reconstructed in London. Although touted as an act of defiance to the destruction, if not presented delicately, and I would say that it was not presented delicately and with sophistication, it may, it's a, it may serve to mask the reality of the irreparable loss of the original. 
And finally, the incorporation of photogrammetry models into fantastical representations of the past has the potential to present a state of hyperreality. Video game designers are beginning to make more and more use of photogrammetry to create realistic assets, but by incorporating them into hyperreal environments, not only pervert the meaning of the objects, but present them as something completely detached from reality in a state of hyperreality. So I don't mean for any of this to come across as cynical or negative. I think that photogrammetry and other forms of digital representations are incredible techniques, which will only grow in importance with time. However, they are part of a wider social and cultural transition of society into the digital or virtual age. And the implications of these changes need to be carefully considered. By reviewing the theoretical perspectives of Benjamin and Baudrillard, who analyzed the major shifts in representation of their own times, we may be able to better understand how to account for this transition and how to use the technology wisely. So I'm hoping to develop this into an article for publication, so feedback would be very much appreciated. Um, I've got a couple minutes left for questions before the break, and um, if you have any later, feel free to email me and please do check out the Sketchfab page. Thank you very much.